Hello everybody, it's Yashar here, back again with another video and in this video I'm going to talk about Brookfield Asset Management or BAM stock. BAM is the largest Canadian holding in my personal portfolio and I recently added to my position during the recent pullback in the share price of the company. In this video I will discuss their business, their future plans for 2022 and beyond, their dividends, the risk associated with this company and finally I will provide a detailed stock analysis using my personal discounted cash flow model and will then provide you with the fair value of this stock depending on your investment goals. The company HQ is located at Toronto and their shares are traded on TSX for almost 70 Canadian dollar at the time of recording this video. They pay a small quarterly dividend with a yield of almost 1% and the market capitalization of the company is around 109 billion Canadian dollar. BAM performance was absolutely amazing in the last 20 years and they actually smoked S&P 500 in terms of the returns with a 20% year over year return compared to a 8% year over year return of S&P 500, which is absolutely amazing. Before starting the video, I want to emphasize that I'm not a financial advisor and this video is not a financial advice for you to buy, hold or sell this stock. This is just my personal opinion and you should always do your own research before making any financial decision. With that being said, let's start the video. Brookfield is an asset management company which not only invests in traditional venture capital and private equity assets, but also their main focus is on real assets or alternative assets, which means real estate, renewable power generation facilities, infrastructures, healthcare, and even potentially software business. They have a global diversity in terms of their assets and they operate in more than 30 country around, countries around the world. They operate in North America, South America, Europe, Middle East, Pacific region, and even Eastern Asian countries like China, South Korea, and Japan. The fundamental of BAM business is simple. If they see value somewhere in a business or in an asset, they invest for value. It doesn't matter what part of the world or which sector this business operates in. The most important fact factor for Brookfield is value. Then they try to enhance the operations of the business they own and monetize these assets as much as possible. As an example, we can see how Brookfield owns various physical properties around the world, ranging from US and Canada to Germany, China, and even India. Some people compare Brookfield business model to Berkshire Hathaway and call it a Canadian Berkshire, which somehow is correct. Even if you look at the letters to shareholders from the company CEO Bruce Flatt, you can see similarities in management style. But the main difference is global scope of BAM compared to Berkshire, which is mainly focused on US businesses. Like Berkshire, Brookfield has long-term perspective when it comes to investment in value, and I personally have a lot of faith in this company operations and management. Brookfield's philosophy when it comes to investment is that real assets are the future, and they plan to increase their investment in real assets from 30% of their capital to 60% by 2030. This is a bold move and demonstrate that BAM is going to buy a lot of new businesses and assets in the coming years. They have a few important justifications for this shift towards real assets in the coming years. For example, they think government debts around the world uh, will increase significantly, which create opportunities in the area of buying value infrastructures. They clearly have plans to buy quality properties in city centers. They plan to invest in decarbonization and they see software as the next, next infrastructure, which is pretty interesting. Particularly, it seems that they will focus a lot on buying value in software businesses, particularly data storage solutions. In terms of the year-over-year -year growth, on average, the company were able to grow their earnings by 15% in the last couple of years. For the reference, in 2021 alone, they were able to grow their distributed earnings before realization by almost 35%, which is a superb growth number. It's really difficult to understand exactly how each sector of the company operates as the accounting is very complex for a business like Brookfield with so many sectors. But what, can, what we can see is amazing growth in the past five years in all sectors of the business ranging from real estate and infrastructure to renewable energy, tech and insurance business. They anticipate to be able to, uh, to more than double their current distributed earnings before realization by 2026. And they actually estimate their own share value to be $150 to $184 per share in 2026, which is very interesting. All in all, 
BAM is a beast in terms of the growth and I think they will be able to continue to grow their business in the next few years at a fast pace. Brookfield has a long history of paying and increasing their dividend year after year. In the last seven years, they approximately increased their dividend by 15% year over year and due to extremely low payout ratio, there is still lots of room for increasing this dividend in the future. The priority for Brookfield is not paying dividend, of course, and they try to reinvest in themselves and buy new assets and businesses under the fair market value and return the profit to the shareholders via capital appreciation. Still, I think they will continue to grow this dividend year over year at a rate between 10 to 20% year over year. Brookfield has different sources of liquidity which can help them to navigate through various financial environments and their debt to capitalization ratio is actually pretty low at around 10%. Right now they have close to 78 billion Canadian dollar in dry powder ready to deploy and they are looking for opportunities around the world. However, I can name two main risks with investment in Brookfield. The first one is complexity of their business. No matter how hard you try, you cannot fully understand the details of each business and each sector of the company and therefore you have to trust the company management at some level. I personally have trust in Bruce Flatt and his team but you never know and the unknown is almost always a risk. The second risk is, rising, is the rising interest rate environment and because Brookfield has so many real estate assets and they do financing a lot, it could be a risk to some of their businesses. Personally, I'm not worried about these risks as much and the main reason is the history, which shows Brookfield management knows, knows how to navigate through challenges and through difficult times. This is my favorite part of the video where I can show you my stock analysis based on the financial data I discussed in the previous parts of the video. I use a discounted cash flow model, which basically estimates value for stocks based on projections for the future cash flows. So I make some assumptions about the growth of the company in the next 10 years and then discount the future cash flow into the present value of the stock based on my expected rate of return. So I start with the past four quarter operating cash flow of the company and based on three different scenarios, I predict the future cash flow of the company in the next 10 years. In the bear case or the most negative case for the stock, the company can grow 12% in the short term and then the growth will drop to 8% in the long term. The 12% growth coming from the growth in the business and also the dividend. I consider terminal multiple of price to cash flow of 8 for this case, which is consist consistent with historical bear periods for this company. For normal case, I consider a little bit better growth and a terminal multiple of 10, which is the historical average multiple for this company. For the bull case or the best possible outcome, I consider the business grows by 20% in the short term and then the growth rate drops to 16% in the long term. And I consider a terminal multiple of 12, which is bull multiple for this company. This growth rate is in line with Brookfield predictions about their business and the future growth. I assign a 50% chance to the normal case, a 25% chance to the bear case, and a 25% chance to the bull case. For growth stocks, I usually expect 15% return and for dividend stable stocks, I expect 10% return. If I expect a 10% return from this company, the fair value of the company is currently at 78.52 Canadian dollar, which means compared to current share price of almost $70, the shares are traded at 12% discount. And it is a buy according to the model. It means if you expect 10% return on your money year over year, this company, this stock is probably going to deliver that 10% and a little bit more in the next 10 years. It's always fun to see what analyst predictions are for a company and according to Yahoo Finance, the analyst price target for this company is currently at $88 per share for 2022 with a buy rating, which is significantly higher than the fair value of the stock according to my model. At the end of the day, if you're looking for a growth in a diversified business, then Brookfield Asset Management is a strong company to look at, particularly at the current valuations, which is in my opinion attractive. I personally own Brookfield Asset Management in my portfolio as my largest Canadian holding and would buy it again here at this price as it probably can provide 10% year over year return. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was a little bit long but I tried to go over everything and if you enjoyed the video please leave a comment and let me know which stocks you like me to review next and please consider subscribing to the channel to see similar videos. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next video. Farewell.